Hey everybody, Scott here for the Helix Channel. It's Tuesday. And today I'm going to continue on in the vein of what I started yesterday. New year, new uh, videos, and there's new Helix users. So this week is all about the, uh, the new Helix users and getting you acquainted with all the fun stuff going on with the Helix. Yesterday we talked about AMP parameters, uh, gate parameters, EQ parameters, IR parameters. Today we're going to talk about doubling up amplifiers and we're going to talk about some effects. You wanna? Okay, here we are at the Helix, and today I'm gonna show you how to create a secondary path to use this secondary path down here. Actually, it'll be a tertiary path because I'm gonna create the secondary one by going like this, pushing in the, uh, the joystick, and I'm going to go over here and grab a volume pedal. Doesn't matter. Uh, I use the volume pedal because it uses the least amount of DSP. Now, to create the path, what we need to do is hit the action button. That's why I left this shot wide open. Hit the action button. Then, pull it down with the joystick. Creates this path. Press the joystick in. Now you can go back up here and move the, uh, the merge point here by pressing action on it. And then, boom, hit the joystick in. Now we want to split this evenly so that the signal will go evenly across here and then down to wherever else we go. So I'm going to move this just because I have OCD. And we're going to bypass it because I don't want to use the, a volume pedal. I don't really care for volume pedals, especially in this context. It doesn't make any sense to have one right there other than to create this path. So what we do at this second merge point, hit the action button again, pull it down with the joystick, press it in. So now we've got this going on. Come over until we're on top of that, and then turn the joystick to the right. It's going to point down. Now we are actually going from the amp straight across and then down to the bottom path. So everything from this point down here is uh, secondary, but happening at the same time. So what we want to do is put another amp down here. I've got the same amp that I had yesterday. We've got the Huat, and uh, it's a clean. Doesn't sound clean now because we're hearing the amp happening without an IR. If you want to hear just the uh, top path, move this split all the way over to A100. Now we'll hear. There we go. That's the amp I know and love. Good stuff. So let's move that back to an even split so we can hear both. Now the idea behind uh, running multiple amps, to me it's like, you know, when I heard that the Helix could run two amps at the same time, I was psyched. I thought a Fender and a Vox at the same time, why would I not? A Marshall and a High Watt at the same time? Ooh, yes please. So you know, I like to pick amps that uh, complement one another. I don't pick the PV Panama and a Fender Twin. It just doesn't work. It's just, you know, that's just kind of silly. So I pick a couple of amps that I think complement one another. The Huat is really versatile because it can sound like any, basically any of the clean amps. And then if you put a, an overdrive in front of it, it can sound like, you know, a great heavy sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab another great amp that does a very similar thing. The J, no, yes, the Brit J45, and I absolutely love it. Oh, you know what I did wrong up here? I got to put this in front of the amp. I don't want the amp to go down to the bottom. I want the compressor then to split to the new amp. If you run one amp to, into another, oh, it's not going to sound great. So that was my bad, but uh, all better. So the Brit J45 is, is similar in the, in the uh, uh, to the, what do you call it, the high watt, in that it um, sounds great clean, and I'll play it for you clean. As soon as I put an IR, let's grab a Marshall IR, because we're using a Marshall amp, and you know, why not? 
I use third-party IRs for everything that I make. I just think that they, uh, they help the Helix to feel more like a real amp. And the high watt IRs, I'm sorry, not a high watt, I want a Marshall. We're gonna go with the 1A. And we're gonna set the low cut to 120, the high cut 4.4. Basic starting points for that. And we can go up here, run the split over to B100. Now we'll just hear the bottom amp and IR. <laughs> pretty bottom endy, which, you know, that's easy to fix. Roll up the uh, IR a bit, say 150, and reduce the bottom end. Now, I find that the mid-range control also controls quite a bit of bottom end, and dialing that out makes a big difference. So the amp can handle, you know, being probably about 5.8 and still be considered totally clean. Now, as we talked about yesterday with the master, I usually roll those back to about nine. And here's the thing, the master will clean up any amplifier. And I mean any amplifier. I've used the angle meteor and made it clean by rolling the master down to about 2.5. So if you've got an amp that you want to sound cleaner, and you know, I can still set the drive way up here. You get a different uh, kind of sound. Uh, since I'm not going for that kind of sound on this one, I'm gonna go about 5.5 five, and then I want this at about nine. It'll still be clean. That's more, more, more my kind of clean. So we can roll the sag up on this one, turn the hum off, pull back some ripple, leave the bias where it is. So we've got these two separate sounds. I'll play the uh, top one again. It's a very different kind of sound. Much tighter bottom end. And then I've got the, the bottom one. And this is one of the reasons why I combine amps. Because I get the best of both of these amps at the same time when I do this. I'm gonna have to roll my volume back on my big knob here. We get, you know, the best of both amps, I think. And, you know, here's what you do. Experiment. Grab a couple of amps that you think would be well suited together and, you know, set them up. See what they, see what they sound like, you know? We can handle a little bit more bottom end off of the, uh, also let's roll this back too. Off the top amp. It doesn't need to be so bright. And this one can be a little bit brighter actually and we're still running both someone's a little bit distorty so let's roll back that's probably this one and we can also control the gain with the uh, with the compressor. Now save the preset by hitting save twice. There we go. A very solid clean sound. Now, now that you know about that, here's another thing I love to do. I like to put some effects in and I like to separate them. So for me, having a reverb on one path and a delay on the other path makes perfect sense. 
the delay doesn't run into the reverb, reverb doesn't run into the delay, it doesn't cause any uh, issues. Because they can get, you know, garbled when you run one into the other. And, you know, that's the whole reason for having these secondary paths. You can actually take this path and run it up to this and just bypass the, uh, you know, uh, the reverb if you put the delay on the exact same path. Just drop it down into here, you know, if you, if you want. I like to completely separate them like this. Call me crazy. Let's set up a nice... duct delay. I like the duct delay because it allows you to, it's one of the few delays that allows you to adjust the high and low cuts. And to me, if you can't adjust the high and low cuts of the repeats, then what's the point in a, in a delay? Because then you're just going to have a big woofy mess. I like a nice tailored uh, delay repeat. And to do that, you've got to remove the threshold and the ducking. I don't really care for the ducking aspect of it. It's not why I like the duct delay. I like it for what I just said. Now, I will reduce that and that. Put the ducking on, turn the trails on. Here's our delay. <laughs> need to adjust the reverb as Robin Ford called it and I like a nice long pre delay on on the spring I also adjust the the high and low cuts on this one to be about the same and let's go 36 percent turn the trails on now we can hear them individually hear what a sounds like might notice that there's a bit of a volume disparity uh, between the two. So this one is lo much louder already because I turned it way up. So we're going to bring this one to match it at about negative 16. On the IR itself. So now we can go back, run the split back right up the middle. pre-delay basically here's some basics for you the decay is how long the reverb goes it goes 3.3 seconds pre-delay is how long you hear the guitar before you hear before the delay kicks in 100 milliseconds so one tenth of a second the guitar comes in before the the effect the low cut it removes uh, frequencies below 220 Hertz from the reverb signal the reverb uh, guitar sound and the high cut does the same thing but for the highs it uh, pulls the highs back till they're uh, they go between 220 Hertz and 202.2 kilohertz I like to do that with my reverbs the mix is how much of it you get so and the level I don't touch the level because I don't really feel the need to adjust my volumes of my presets via the effects for the most part trails that means when you're switching between presets or switching between uh, snapshots, the uh, reverb effect will be on. It won't just go dead on you when you switch between. Cool. Now for the uh, for this, the time is you know 386 milliseconds. That's the time of the delay before it comes back at you. Feedback is uh, how many repeats, and you can have you know lots and lots of repeats if you want them. Low cut and high cut are the same thing. 
I've basically tailored the repeats to uh, fit in a certain EQ curve where you don't hear anything below 330 and you don't hear anything above 3.3 kilohertz. And the mix is according, set accordingly. Threshold and ducking I never use because what they do is they uh, work on dynamics, your dynamics of your playing. And I want the repeats to repeat no matter what I do with my hand. So. Dynamic attack and dynamic release. I'm gonna plead the fifth on those. Not 100% sure what they do, but I, I found that I like these settings the best. And since I'm not really using these, they're probably moot. They probably are you know, only related, related to the threshold and the ducking, so it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, trails, same thing with the, uh, as the reverb, when you switch between snapshots or presets, it's still there. Cool. Good stuff. I'll be back tomorrow with more newbie boot camp basics 101 how to good time fun happy hour. There you go everybody good times. I'll be back tomorrow with a name that riff and for you new people. That's where I play a guitar riff that I learned in about 15 20 minutes on iTunes and then uh, create a preset for it that sounds kind of cool and then I play the riff and if you can be the first to leave the correct artist and title in the comments below you'll win the preset. It's as simple as that. Good times. And then uh, Thursday I'll be back with another tutorial. Friday is Freeset Friday. I make a preset. It's available to everyone for free. You can get it on my website. Go down into the description. There's a link to, the, to my website and also to my donate links. You can donate five bucks a month if you like what I do but you don't want to buy any presets but you find some value in it. You know what I'm saying? So, that being said, I will see you people tomorrow. And until then, rock on.